Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. You may remember in May, I did an introductory video on Darktable. Now, admittedly, I'm not very good at Darktable, and many of you were asking me questions, and I really didn't know the answer. But, luckily, I know an expert on Darktable. His name is Rico, and his channel is Rico Story. I emailed Rico and I asked him if he would mind doing a video for my channel introducing everyone to Darktable and he graciously agreed. For those of you that don't know, Darktable is an alternative to Lightroom and it's open source, which means it's free. And Rico is an expert on Darktable. So in this video, Rico's going to introduce you to Darktable and tell you all the ins and outs about open source software. Also, Rico has graciously agreed to stick around and answer any questions you may have. So in the comments section below, if you do have a question, ask Rico and he'll do his best to answer it. Also, please show Rico some love. In the description below the video, I have a link to his YouTube channel. Please give him a follow. And also in the comment section, just tell him how much you enjoy his content. And while you're at it, subscribe to my channel if you don't already, and remember to ring that bell so you get updates. Now, Rico, take it away. What's going on everybody? My name is Rico Richardson. I'll be your host for today. In this exclusive video for imrphotographer.com, I'm going to introduce you guys to Darktable. Right, so before we start, let me tell you guys what open source actually means. Open source is a programming code in which the copyright holder grants the user under a license to share, change, or distribute the software to anyone or for any purpose. Darktable is such a open source software program and just like Lightroom, it's a raw developer which is non-destructive. Let me show you guys how to get Darktable. Darktable can be found if you go to darktable.org. If you go to install, you get to see this page and it allows you to choose your operating system. So I have Windows, this one's for Ubuntu. The most stable version is Darktable 2.6. There's already a 2.7 beta, which we will be using for this tutorial. But here you can find the latest Windows installer for Darktable. Now what Darktable also offers is a manual. So for that, you need to scroll upwards. And then when you go to resources, the manual is available in English, French, German, and Italian, or you can download it in PDF format in English, French, German, Italian, and Polish. When you click on English, it takes you to a different page in which it shows the developers of Darktable, and then it starts with a table of contents. It shows you the program invocation, a chapter about the user interface, a chapter about the Darktable basic workflow, the light table, which I'll get back to in a minute, the light table panels, dark room, dark room panels. For those of you that use tethering, there's a whole chapter dedicated to that as well. So you can use that with the supported cameras. Right, so a lot of you use Adobe Lightroom, which got a subscription model. Darktable does not, it's completely free. It's got a great community on pixelist.us, which contains developers as well. So if you've got ideas to make it better, or you just want to pitch in, or you want to help code, please go to pixelist.us and go to the Darktable forum. And after this brief introduction, it's time to take you guys into Darktable. Similar to the library in Lightroom, Darktable has the light table menu. And the light table menu allows you to import your images. So you can import an image or a folder, or you can scan for devices. So let's say either an external HDD or your phone. So let me close that one down by clicking on it. It allows you to collect the images. It shows you the recently used collections and it shows you the image information. In the middle is where all the images are being displayed. Right now I've got one image. But as I said, you can add more to those and then you can even add stars to them, give them ratings. You can sort them by different criteria, as you can see over here. And the light table menu allows you to go into the settings as well by clicking this button over here. And then this preference menu pops up, which allows you to change the GUI options, the core options, session options, shortcuts, and presets. So let's close that down. And on the right side, what you can see is things that have to do with the images being displayed over here. If you click open select, you can select all, select none, invert a selection that you've made, select a film roll, 
or select untouched image which haven't been edited in Darktable before. So let me close that one down and it allows you to change a couple of things of the selected images. So you can remove them, you can trash them, you can move them someplace else, copy them. You can even create an HDR this way. So if you've got five or six pictures with different exposures, you can hit the create HDR button and then a new file a HDR will be created for you. And there's loads of other options as well that we're not going into right now. So let me close that one down. And about the history stack, everything that you do to the image will be written to an XMP file, which is the history stack. And this allows you to copy it or to discard it or to do whatever with it. You can load one if you've got one. So if you download one from someone else, you can load that one or you can write one as well. So let me close that one down. And if you've created styles or presets, you can find them in this menu, the styles menu. As you can see, I've created a couple of styles that I use with images to help me speed up the edits. And the final two things that I'm going to show you guys is the metadata editor and the export selected. If you click this one open, you can change the title, the description. You can say who the creator is, who the publisher is, and who holds the rights of that specific image. And after you're done editing your image, what you need to do is you need to export it because you want to post it to your Instagram or on your webpage or on your blog or someplace else so for that you're going to export select it and then you've got a couple of options that you can choose from you can change the file format you can allow upscaling a high quality resampling you can give it a profile i urge you guys to use srgb so if you post it on your instagram colors aren't going to change you can change the intent the style which you've put over here and you can change the mode as well and after you put in the desired words and you've created a destination folder or you know where you want to export your image to, all you gotta do is hit export and the image will be exported to the destination folder that you gave it. But this isn't the place where you will spend most of your time. Most of your time will be spent in the dark room. So let me go to the dark room. And this is an image that I've edited before. Reason why I'm using this image is because I can show you guys how Darktable works. I'm going to start here on the top snapshots. If you take a snapshot, it will basically take a print screen of the image you see in front of you. And that's very handy if you want to compare it to, let's say the original. So let me click the original. Let me click the color sounds and there you can see. So now you can switch around between the original and the newest version to see if you like it or not. So let me go back to that one. Let me deselect the snapshot. And then the history shows all the modules because Darktable works with modules that you've used or applied to this image. And it shows you by steps. Now please keep in mind if you click step number six and you start to edit, everything above it will be gone. So always make sure that you start editing from the last step unless you want to undo that one. And once you're done editing everything, just hit compressed history stack to make sure that all the extra steps or things that you've undone are gone. Uh, you can duplicate the layer that you're working with as well. You can change the color picker from area to a point and you've got the image information which shows you the information of the image and the mask manager will show you all the masks that you have used. So that's the left side of dark table. In the middle is the image obviously. Down here in this film strip will be the images available for you in the light table menu. And on the right side is where the modules are. The right side is divided in four areas. You've got the histogram over here. Then you've got the group menus over here. And then you've got the modules that you can use over here. And you've got this specific area, more modules that if you can't find a module or if it's not in your favorites, you can find it here, click it, and then it will pop up in your favorites. The groups are divided into the active modules, into the favorites into the basic group, into the tone group, into the color group, into the correction group, and into the effects group. I've set it to favorites right now because these are the modules that we've used for this image. And after you've applied a module, what you can do is you can decide if you want to apply it to the entire image or just to a specific part. And that's exactly what makes Darktable stand out from let's say Lightroom because that's its masking abilities. Let me show you guys by going to the color zones module and then the options Darktable has to mask your image is a uniformly one, which allows you to change the blend mode. Another one is the drawn mask, which allows you to change the blend mode as well, but you can use a brush, a circle, an ellipse, 
or a path tool or a gradient tool to change things in the image. You can use a parametric mask, which is based on the darkest and lightest pixel or color pixels in this image. Or you can use a combination of both, which means that you can edit the desired pictures or mask out the desired pictures and the desired area of the image. Let me show you guys how that works real quick. So I'm scrolling down and if you want to know what will be changed in the image, all you got to do is click this symbol right here. And now everything is yellow, which means that all the changes are being applied to the entire image. But I only want to apply them to this area, so to the colors. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in this point like so. I'm going to bring in this point as well. And as you can see, the mask is already starting to become more narrow. I'm going to bring in these points as well. And I might be able to move these to the right a little bit. Now what you can do is you can move the top one individually, but the low one can't pass the top one. There you go. And what you can do as well is you can feather it and you can blur it. So I'm going to feather this mask a little bit like so. And I'm going to blur it just a little bit as well. And now as you can see, the yellow parts is what's being changed in the image. So let me deselect the symbol. Let me show you guys the result. So using the parametric mask, it allows you to target specific areas of your image, which can be based on the lightness and the brightness of the pixels, but it can also be based off the colors of the A, B, Chroma and U channels. And like I said, masking is one of its key features of Darktable. So now let's scroll back up, let's close it down. And that's the basics of Darktable. For those of you that want to know, you've got some other options as well, which is a map, which shows you where the images have been taken, which is a slideshow of the images in the light table menu, and which is a tethering menu, which allows you to use Darktable in your camera in let's say a studio environment in which you can just preview the image right on screen after taking it. And that's it. I hope you guys liked it. Let me know in the comment section down below. I would love to hear your thoughts. This video has been produced exclusively for imrphotographer.com. If you've got any questions about Darktable, leave them in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer them as soon as possible. If you'd like to learn more about Darktable, please go to my channel, subscribe. I've got a lot of videos covering different topics in Darktable. And I guess there's just one more thing left for me to say, which is make love to the like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Hit that bell button to be the first to be notified when I drop a new video. And until next time, doei!